But the problem is you don't know what you got until it's gone. And my question is, A, how many wins is Belichick worth? Almost impossible to quantify, but I'd probably start at four. I think he's worth four wins. What's going on, everybody? Our best podcast is back. Another NFL preview here for you as we inch closer to the opening week of the National Football League. It's beautiful. We love, we love it. It's great. I'm the Bear. That's Jeff, Sammy P, and Will will uh, join us in a, in a little while. A lot of stuff to uh, to kick around in the gambling group chat this week. Uh, one thing that obviously I'm curious about as a as a Jets fan, um, which I'm sure will come up at some point during the uh, the gambling group chat as well, this Hassan Reddick stuff. Like he wanted a trade from the Eagles. And you kind of knew he was a bit of a malcontent. And Joe Douglas and the Jets trade for him. And you knew the situation. And now he's holding out because he wants a different contract and he wants more money. It's like this shouldn't have been a surprise to the Jets. Two, uh, two, two uh, folded, double-folded question here for you, I guess. Number one, what do we think ultimately happens? And number two, how does your opinion of the Jets' defense, which – is thought to be one of the better units in football. How does the perception of them change, the perception of the team change, if A, Reddick doesn't show up, and then B, Reddick, not only does Reddick not show up, you don't have Bryce Huff, who you had last year, who was the guy that went to Philadelphia back there, so you have neither of them. So, like, I want to buy in, I want to believe, yeah. but this, should this give me some uh, some cause for concern here? Look, Bear, <laughs> the one of the hardest parts like he pauses and laughs. One of the hardest parts of winning the NFL is turning a losing culture into a winning culture. Right? I I've, I've been in on winning teams like the Giants. We didn't win when I was there, but you walk in the building, there's four Lombardis. Tom Coughlin's the head coach. You feel the winning, right? The Jets are just dysfunctional, man. At every step of the way, there's dysfunction. And you have to be special to break through that. And maybe Aaron Rodgers is able to do it this season. But this is another in a long list of things the Jets have done over the years where <laughs> you, you just you're not buttoned up, right? Like you're just I, I, look, the, the 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 trade happened according to Hassan Reddick with the idea that a new deal will be part of the trade. Obviously, the deal is not good enough for him, or there hasn't been a deal which has been reported as well. They haven't talked about it since March. So you didn't honor your side. Now, maybe the Jets come out and say, no, we, we've offered him four times. He he, he didn't take the deal. But the tr- part of the trade was an acknowledgement that a deal would get worked out. It hasn't been done yet. So just another example, Bear, of the Jets doing business in a different way than maybe the Steelers and Niners do it, where IU has a deal <laughs> – before he goes to you know, before he goes somewhere, right? And they could argue that yeah. Hassan Rag shouldn't have agreed to the trade, and he's not really. I only had no trade clause before it's done. Now, he's going to play this year, Bear, because he's not going to lose all his money. Like that, that that is a bad business decision. No matter how much he wants to get paid, he should not forfeit whatever he's making a week to not play. Right? We saw it with with Chris Jones made it what one game last season. I think Donald did it two years ago. He missed two games. Le'Veon Bell missed an entire what six eight games, but but. He never made that money back. Like, right, you know, Riddick, if plays well enough, can make the money back. So he will play. He will at least he'll be on the roster. I, I can't guarantee he's going to say week one he's ready to play if he shows up, but he'll be on the roster for most of the season and, and, and able to play. But it just goes back to the idea that Bear, that there's just dysfunction in the Jets organization at almost every turn. And you have to play extraordinarily well to get that stink out of the building. Like, like there has to be a force to, to move it. Like Dan Campbell. He's been a force in Detroit to move that stink out of the building and have a winning atmosphere. Is that Robert Sala? Is that Joe Douglas right now? We'll find out this season because the Jets will need that after entire year's worth of talk about everything but the football on the field. It must be so nice to be a fan of like the Steelers or the Ravens or the 49ers, like good organizations that you know are always going to make good, solid decisions and be a play off the Chiefs, like, it must be nice. 
You can. You, I mean, you're a Watch Steelers fan. You, I think you can join the bandwagon. You, you get. I mean, is she prepared to to win seven or eight games this year? Is that is she ready for that? Um, I'm trying to get her there. I'm yeah. Trying to get her there. I tried to. <laughs> I tried to. Uh, I don't think she listened to the podcast because she has not commented and uh, about about your comment on her Steelers, but. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get her there and kind of try to uh, lessen her, lessen her expectations, yeah. and that way, if you have a surprise season, you're good. Uh, speaking of a place where there are very few expectations, uh, uh, Denver, uh, the Broncos. Uh, a lot of, I, I love looking at these uh, quarterback markets to start week one, especially with the rookies. Uh, they're, they're kind of drying up now because news is kind of leaked out. And obviously, the JJ McCarthy uh, injury has taken that Vikings uh, quarter, week one quarterback off the. Uh, the board, but I found like Bo Nix to be the week one starter for the Broncos. I found that somewhere at like minus 200 and I bet it like, like he's going to be the starter week one, right? But barring him getting hurt in the next couple of preseason games, he's going to start. And I'll tell you the two reasons why one is that I believe before the game even ended against the Colts, the word came out that he was starting week two for the Broncos in the preseason. Like I mean, like before the game was even over, it's like already announced he's starting week two, but more importantly, bear, if you watched what Denver did offensively, it looked like a Bo Nix offense, like a, an offense designed for Bo Nix. A lot of empty protection, a lot of RPOs and using his legs and incorporating things that he did well at Oregon into Sean Payne's offense. Sean Payne's offense, historically, no RPOs. You had Drew Brees. Like, that wasn't what you did. And already in week one of the preseason, week three of camp at the first game, the offense looked like it belonged to Bo Nix already, and he played well. There were moments he was a little dicey in the pocket, footwork not great, but it looked like he belonged in the offense already. And I think it's very clear that he's starting week two. This is the game that, you know, week one for the preseason. Week two is now the game that people use as the dress rehearsal. Week three becomes sort of the, you know, the the empty the bench, get everyone reps type of thing. Maybe starters play a, a quarter or, or, or so. So if he's starting the game plan week, Bear, the week we're game planning like a regular season, which is this week, he's starting week one. What do we? No, no decision to be made in Seattle, right? I mean, everyone's all, yeah, Sam Howell looked pretty good. Like, Geno's okay. one, well, right? I the, <laughs> the thing about the preseason. I, I I I love your pause and your laugh and like another pause. It's just like I'm I'm like touching a little bit of a nerve, but you don't want to. Oh, it, the thing about, you want to you like just like laugh it off and get into something. I like it. The thing about the preseason that's very hard is diagnosing someone's play against who they're playing, right? You mean so Joe example, Milton's not going to be the offensive rookie of the year? Joe Milton is a better player than the Panthers' third-string defense. Like, he is more athletic than all those guys. He should play well. You have to look at it by expectation. Like, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, J.J. McCarthy, like, they're, they're first-round picks. They should play well, or relatively well, against backups, like they should. That's something like like that's a positive because it should look that way. People look at it as like, oh, they're just playing the twos. They stink. Well, no, it, it should look that way. Now, of course, when they play the ones, we can reserve judgment or change our opinion based on how they play a- against the ones. But like Sam Howell, in in a, a a little bit of an opportunity to play against twos, he's been a starter. Like he's not a he's not a, a complete bum bear. He's not a third string quarterback. So he's going to look okay against the twos. But again. We've seen him enough now with the ones to know that, you know, probably an okay backup. He's a fifth round, a, a, a low end, a, a, quarterback, right? a low end starter. If you have to start him, Gino will start there. Russell Wilson, by the way, if healthy, will start in Pittsburgh. Like I, I, I don't really think it's that complicated at times, but people love to overreact in the preseason. Look, we all do that. It's, it's human nature, but it, it, my thing is like. Should it look like it should? Jane Daniels, couple throws, look like it should. Caleb Williams, it looked like it should. McCarthy, unfortunately, got hurt, but it looked like it should. It looked like it should. But even Michael Penix, five drives, look like it should. Those are positives, in my opinion. If, if the other thing happens, like, like Drake May, he didn't play very much, but he yeah, kind of, eh, right, a little iffy. Like th- Those are when you question things you've seen in the preseason. Well, I'm going to question a lot of things, and so are you in the next segment coming up here. Sammy and Will join us here for the Gambling Group Chat. Gambling Group Chat is back. Myself, Will Hill, Sammy P, and Jeff. 
who's always here, kick around the uh, the AFC East in the National Football League. They, they were the site where the uh, Super Bowl champion New York Jets reside. I'm kidding. I, I did. I did wear. I did wear green in honor of the uh, the Ducks and the Jets for uh, for you and I today, uh, Jeff. But obviously, a ton of storylines here in the AFC East. You, you've, you've got the Dolphins. You've got the Bills. Can they finally get through the Jets? Obviously, uh, we've talked about them at length. And then the the, the Patriots, who were without Bill Belichick for the first time in a long time and have one of the the lower, I believe, the lowest uh, over-under win total in the league. So, uh, Jeff, I'll, I'll start with you. Any any thoughts on the Patriots? Are they indeed as bad as a four-and-a-half win total says they are? I mean, they can't play Drake May because their offensive line is in such shambles. Like, like, they, like that's a story coming out of New England. Like, they can't, they can't play – they can't play – their quarterback that they would like to play because their offensive line can't block long enough for him to feel you know comfortable. Problem. And so I feel like that's a huge problem when it comes to trying to defend some of the defensive lines they're going to play in their division, especially if Miami's defensive line comes back healthy. So I, I think I would go under here. Uh, they're plus 320 for worst record in, in the league, which is certainly possible. Brissett, though, is good enough to win them games if they play Drake May more than Brissett. I feel much better about any of these wagers, but I don't think New England offensively, Sammy, is anywhere close to being good enough to win any games if the defense can't do their job. I'm out here in Boston. Joe Milton goes off in a preseason quarter, and people are honestly <laughs> thinking about him starting the season. Under Where have we heard this before? I, they have three quarterbacks now, according to the local sports radio oh, station. Oh, good. And, and one of them is Bailey Zappi, who can't even see over the line, which is a different conversation for a different day. The, it's a fascinating conversation. It's easy for us to drill the Patriots and talk about the lack of talent. I said last year Belichick had to go, and people were mocking me on Twitter. You four-eyed nerd. You don't know football. Okay, well, Belichick's gone now. But the problem is you don't know what you got until it's gone. And – my question is, A, how many wins is Belichick worth? Almost impossible to quantify, but I'd probably start at four. I think he's worth four wins. And more importantly, in terms of how do we profit off of New England this year? If this really is like ripping a Band-Aid off a severe gash and the blood goes everywhere, they're going to get blown out a lot this year, guys. Because Bill would always keep games close. Bill would punt you know, from his own 45, Bill would do all these things to just try and keep it a one score game to get that, that turnover, that fumble punch or that interception touchdown or whatever. If it's as bad as I think it could be, we're going to see the Patriots for the first time in a long time, losing games 38 to 10, 35 to three. It, it could be really bad for them. ATS this year. If the drop off is bigger than the books believe. With that bad offense, Will, do you think maybe uh, the team total unders might be the way to go, at least early on, if maybe books don't catch on to that right away? Yeah, it's uh, look, you missed the five and a half. So there were five and a half briefly. Um, I, I could only look towards under. Like the AFC is not a fun place to be if you don't have one of these superhero quarterbacks. I know a lot of them got hurt last year, but Burrow, Herbert, Rodgers, those guys are back. We'll see about Herbert's health. But you just look at the quarterbacks, Mahomes, Lamar, Allen. It's just... My goodness, I know the defense is good. Is the defense going to be as good without Belichick? Probably not, because say what you want about him as a team builder. That got stale. The offense, that was bad, but he was still a great defensive mind. That was their calling card last year. I just, I can't get to the over. It would be under or nothing. Just skilled players. They don't have one guy you're interested in drafting in fantasy football. They don't have any backs, receivers, offensive line. Brissett's the kind of guy who just sort of takes the form of people around him. If you put him on, uh, I don't know, a talented team, the Dolphins, somebody he could spread the ball uh, play point guard and not look terrible. But if you're going to put him in a situation with no weapons, uh, I think there's been a little reshaping of the narrative. Like, oh, Brissett, he's not that bad. I think Brissett can be bad if you put him on a bad offense. So it'd be under or nothing for me. He didn't make any bets on it. Yeah. Would you guys, I'll, I'll, so, sorry, Bear. Uh, okay. Uh, 330.5 points this season. That's 19.4 a game. Would you go under? Under. I, I I took it at I took it at uh, I think a different number, but I'm trying to pull what I got it at. I got three thirty seven and a half. We didn't get that ago. text. That was nice. Yeah, like, where was that? I I got I got one touchdown better, but no, nonetheless, where was the text? Um, 
We were text. I, I believe I sent you the long text message with some of those wagers. Nonetheless, I mean, I feel like that's a, some of these ways to bet these, right? Is, is like bad offense instead of betting them each week to go under, just take their season scoring under, season touchdown under, or, or yards under, any way you want to do it. Um, but they're just not going to score this year. It's it just, and that's fine, but they have a long way to go on offense. They only scored 270 last year. That number doesn't even make sense. So it's, it's going to score 60 more points with the a worst. Oh, you, that's the bad number is what I'm saying. I mean, to, yeah. they, two years ago, they scored 296. Last year, they scored 268. They're going to get substantially better. Well, this year they have Joe Milton. Set. <laughs> no. Well, well no, Joe Milton, he's going to play against all the, the guys who are going to be cut from the opposing defenses that he's that he's faced so far. And he's, he's going to look that great. How about last? How about last winless team? Tell me where their first win comes from. At Bengals, home versus Seahawks. At Jets, at 49ers, Dolphins, Texans, at Jaguars. That might be a neutral game uh, overseas. Jets again at the Titans, at the Bears, Rams, Dolphins, Colts. I mean, where, where, I, I don't see five. I'll, I'll tell you I, actually like I, hope the comes, I hope it comes week one against the Bengals to knock about half a survivor out. That's right. That's right, man. The more I read the schedule, I, I actually have to get the under in the account. And uh, I don't know. Last one, this team might be might be in play because that is a brutal schedule, especially early on. Not that the second half is much more favorable. If it's not Seattle week two, it's not going to happen for yeah. a long time. Well, I'm I'm on the under on another team in, in that division, though. And that's the Dolphins. I know people are are high on the Dolphins, but this is a team that's got a lot of turnover on the roster. A new a new defensive coordinator. Remember last year they couldn't beat a one in six against playoff teams. They had that uh, last minute win against the, the Cowboys finally late in the year. Ten and one against the non playoff teams. Everything kind of went right. Tua had a great year. Stayed healthy. Uh, can he stay healthy again? That's a million dollar question. He got the new contract, so I mean, like, uh, uh, of course, Murphy's Law will, will say this is the year that that, that something will happen, and, and he won't be able to stay healthy and play this play the entire entire season. He got some cold weather games late in the year. Like, I don't know. I I bet Dolphins under. I bet uh, to all the two unders. I bet no playoffs. Like, and this isn't like the the the, the Jets fan anti Dolphin coming out on me. I mean, I love watching them play. I actually thought about maybe playing um, A Chain for Offensive Player of the Year, but uh, I I don't know. I think this defense is, is going to struggle, and I'm not sold that uh, late in the year uh, two is going to be as healthy as he was last year. I agree directionally. I just think you probably. Better off waiting till the middle of the season and getting some adjusted win total, some adjusted yep. numbers. Because the fir first of all, the first half of their schedule is much easier than the second half. And they're a team that plays well in warm weather. They play well when everything's going good. But look at the second half of their schedule. This is a team that doesn't play well in cold weather. They have to play at the Browns, at the Bills in November, uh, at the Jets. Uh, there are a lot of at Green, Green Bay, Bay right around Christmas. Also, at the, also they play the Texans and the Rams in the second half. So, you know, maybe you let them get off to their four and two, five and one start, and they look good. And then you come in and adjust at eleven and a half or uh, a fat plus number to miss the playoffs. I think it could go well early. I just think they fade second half. And to your point, two was healthy last year. That has not been the norm. And it's not just Tua, Armstead, the offensive lineman, uh, Tyree Kill, Waddle. Anyone knows that you, you have those guys in fantasy. There's always a concern. Waddle, especially those guys are always banged up. Short, quick pass. Is middle of the field, they get hit a lot, so they feel brittle. Uh, I just think when is sometimes as important as if or what. And I think middle of the season, you, you sort of pick your target. October, middle of October, you can maybe get into it with some better numbers. Will I think I think you can wait till almost end of November because they they go Raiders, Patriots, and then it's at Green Bay, Jets at Texans, Niners at home, at Browns at Jets. It's a pretty it's a pretty rough final six games if the it Jets is. are in playoff contention, right? Uh, two of those games at, at Green Bay, at Cleveland are night games too, so cold weather games as well. Uh, they, they're a team built to win the regular season. Like I, I think fading them is, I agree. is difficult because of that reason. Like they're just they're built to play on fast tracks. They're built to play when other teams are a little bit beat up, right? Defense, it's week eight. You're a little tired, a little sore. Here comes that that fast paced offense. But when the postseason gets here and teams are more honed in, the you know the 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 things that ail you seem to ail you less because it's the postseason. You're lamped up. They can't compete against those teams. Um, so I, I think I would lean toward somewhere in the middle of the season after that sort of Raiders Patriots stretch, uh, looking to to fade them after that. Yeah, that's a hell of a call by you guys. I hadn't thought about that to bet the playoff market. No, 
midseason on Miami. I was thinking I like the plus price on the no, but I've got them um, favored in seven straight games to open the season. So, I mean, you should go four and three or five and two. Now, obviously, the math doesn't tell the whole story. We don't think that these games are played on calculators, at least on this program. It's tough for me to get behind Miami, though, guys, because last August, September, I was all over McDaniel, coach of the year, Tyreek, <laughs> MVP. Both of those guys were, you know, either favored or the second favorite for those awards. And Hill had the injury on that Monday night against the Titans. That's the game Tennessee won as a 14-point dog. Couldn't believe that result, but that derailed everything. And I think Jeff just sort of hit on it. This is a regular season team. I don't think they're tough enough to win in the playoffs. So you can miss me with the, you know, AFC and the Super Bowl tickets. I might let I might let them go five and two and then bet the no on the playoff market because people are going to just salivate over how talented and how speedy they are. And, you know, they're going to be playing in 80 degree weather until the middle of November. So until they face adversity, everybody's going to like them. And then that'll drive the yes price up uh, on the playoff market. Will, you've got me man, with buyer's remorse on my uh, on all my Dolphins bets that I made last night. I wonder if I have a cash rate option for uh, for no uh, for, for no penalty. Hmm. Not going to uh, poor, jo- poor job by me. Doesn't poor prevent job. you from adding more middle of the season and creating it's even a true. position. Yeah, that's also true. See, I think this division is between the Bills and the Jets. Like you get you can look around out there, and again, you know, what what is your appetite for? risk are you risk averse do you are you willing to take a little bit of a chance like you could if you in theory if you think it is the bills and the jets to win this division you can get the bills at plus 180 you can find the jets at around plus 190 200 and you can as long as one of them win the division you kind of locking up 28 30 percent on your money because you're basically creating a pseudo type r because you think it's an either or scenario so of, of those two teams jeff who do you who do you prefer to win this division, the Bills or or the Doll or the uh, Jets? Dude, I have made zero Jets wagers. I'm just <laughs> not except for Aaron Rodgers, Bills. comeback player of the year. Like that's the only one I've made. Um, I I just they're either going to be like thirteen and four or seven and ten or six and eleven. Like right. I think there's exactly. no in between. There's no in between. And you know, I just I. I guys, I don't know what to think of this team because of the variance I think they can have. I mean, they just traded for Hassan Reddick, who doesn't want to play for them. Yeah, we talked about that earlier. Exactly. It, it just it I I don't know if you guys have any wagers on the Jets. The, the one team I've just I completely stayed away from. I think Rogers wins wins comeback player of the year because of the storyline and just he's not gonna get hurt two years in a row. But that means you think they're going thirteen and four if you bet Rogers to win him comeback player of the year. It it does, I know, <laughs> unfortunately. Um <laughs> But I, jeez, ah, I have a hard time. I just have a hard time with this team, guys. I don't know how you feel about it, Will. I love the talent. I love the talent. I actually disagree. I think both the Bills and the Jets have high floors because if you have Allen, okay. that's probably nine wins right away. And if you have the Jets defense and just throw over a talent, I mean, it went as bad as it could go last year. They didn't win three or four games. They won seven, which, I mean, I'm not a big style fan, but you have to give them some credit. Uh, I just look at the quarterbacks that threw passes for them. They don't have like a guy that's ever going to play in the NFL again, pretty much. They still won seven games. I think Rodgers is going to be fine. I think there's also this narrative. Uh, you're going to hear this a lot. Well, Rodgers two years ago for Green Bay was starting to deteriorate. That's nonsense. He fractured his thumb in week five and he didn't play well he played through an injury i think he's got more left in the tank than people think i think he's smart i think he he, look he's a polarizing figure because of what he does what he says off the court uh, off the field i have no interest in that stuff i just care about the football player look the jets traded for the football player unfortunately so far they've got you know the gm the guy who comments on social issues the guy who has you know opinions on everything once he gets on the field he's tremendous he's got a great team around him he's got a defense i think the sky is the limit i would not be shocked at all uh they're gonna be my pick to come out of the afc i think they're going to the super bowl well uh, sammy well Je- jeff and i kicked this around a little earlier you mentioned reddick and, and he's not there so how much do you think it would affect your viewpoint of the jets defense because not say, say Reddick doesn't show up and he doesn't play and he sits out and he's a malcontent like the, you knew he was when you traded for him. Not only do you not have him, you don't have Huff, who he was yeah. supposed to replace. Like, like Sammy, how does that affect your view of the Jets if indeed uh, Reddick doesn't play? I think he's going to get paid eventually. Me That's too. usually how this works out. But hold on, didn't he request a trade to the Jets and now he yes. wants to get traded from the yes. Jets? Yes. Okay. Just wanted to clear that up in yep. case. Yep. Okay. 
Um, also wanted to clear up Jeff Schwartz, no Jets bets except for a Jets bet that he followed up with. Yes? <laughs> yeah, I, forgot about, I forgot about that one. I did okay. I did make right. that one. It's on my, it's ironing on my out list. the facts I was, here. I was Mary. looking at my sheet. I was looking at my sheet. It is it is there, yes. So I I am not too phased by it because I think he gets paid. In fact, the first bet I made when I got to Vegas at Circa was I went the um exacta both ways, Eagles over Jets, Jets over Eagles. Average wow. price was like 125 to one. Um, I I think that's a decent play given the that value. That will be the toughest Super Bowl ticket ever if it's Jets Eagles. Like they, they, they I'll be... take if if that's the Super Bowl, we're all going on me. So put that on. Right. We're going to be there anyway because Fox has the game, and we're going to be doing shows all week from New Orleans. So I mean, like, good for us. Well, they're not going to invite me and Will. They're going to bring on all your <laughs> no, other no, 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 no. You're, you're you're going, and we're all going to go. <laughs> we're all going to go get some some quality meals at, at, at Delmonico or Emerald. We're recording or, this, right? Somebody write this down. Or, somebody, you, you somebody. Know, it's going to be a massive week of food in New Orleans. I can't. I wait. believe I'm off the hook then for the financials, so I can rewind yeah. when this is over. Um, I also just to bring it full circle, I I am loading up on Keon Coleman, offensive rookie of the year. I think he's going to be the number one guy there. In Buffalo, obviously Diggs is gone. Gabe Davis is gone. Uh, there are some 30 to ones in the market on the rookie out of Florida State. 6'4", 215 pounds, can catch any ball on the field. One hand, two hands. He is a monster. And at 30 to one, I know people are going to talk about Caleb and um, you know, Marvin Harrison Jr. And I understand all that. But I mean, this kid catches 80 balls and has 12 touchdowns. He's going to be the rookie of the year. It's funny because I actually played Brian Thomas uh, to have the most receiving yards for rookies as well, kind of like looking a little bit further down than the uh, than the guys that were taken uh, in in the top ten of the draft. So I, th- I think we're all uh, on di- I think we're kind of all on different pages there in in the in the, in the East, which is why one last Jets thing. I've watched yes. them play in college. I don't know how much you guys have seen them. Sammy, you watch all these uh, you know D three schools and you you bet on all of them, which I love. The Western Kentucky kid Corley, the receiver. I don't know second receiver, third receiver. Williams is always hurt. Their second receiver, uh, uh, Corley can play. He's going to be a good player, an underrated player, I think, for them. Who's who's our team this year? Brown, Albany. Who do who do we got? Who 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 are we following this year in uh in FCS? I was just talking about this the other day. Three years ago, I had Presbyterian. Two years ago, I had Holy Cross. Last year, it was Princeton. So you, you never know, but I, I promise you, it's a small school in the Northeast. That's all I can tell you at this point in time. The Holy Cross quarterback popped up. He transferred somewhere. I'm trying to think of where it was. Bear, Bear might know, but he's had a major program. The, the well, Holy well, Cross the, quarterback, the last, quarterback year. last year, Poffenbar, he transferred to Miami. He's Cam Ward's backup. Okay. Dude, it's been so much fun in those smaller conferences. Presbyterian was the school that didn't punt. So they would they'd be on their own 12 and they wouldn't punt and you just get a touchdown. And the totals were 75, 79, and they still like the games were in the hundreds and they never caught up. But the problem with those FCS schools and those really small schools, the total goes up Saturday morning and it's gone in four yeah. seconds. I mean, the yeah. line gets blasted. Refresh, 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 Ma- refresh. Matthew <laughs> Sluka, you went to UNLV. Does that ring a bell, Sammy? The uh, yeah, it does. Program. I remember okay. that name. They were yeah. scoring. They were also scoring like forty-eight points a game at Holy Cross. Yeah, he's at UNLV now. Yeah, and Fordham had it. Fordham was scoring points a couple of years ago too. A million. A million points a game, so I I can't wait for this. This is going to be fun. Who 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 will be our FCS team of the year? Stay tuned. We'll know soon. I but, got a number made on a food prop for the show too, guys. If you're interested, of course. So um, I know Jeff has never Ooh. had White Castle, which I I would have oh. made yes minus eight thousand that he's had a, a slider before. Oh. Um, but Chris Andrews and I went last week, and he got your order, Bear. He got the four doubles. Didn't get bacon, but four doubles and a fish slider. So somebody in Vegas said, I'm going to make a number for the four of you. And he made it in one session, 98 and a half. Under, no way. No way with four of us? Four? That's 25 each. Singles, though, not doubles. It's the bread, right? Isn't that the problem? It's a lot of bread. Jeff, a slider would look like a nickel in your hand. I don't want to hear it from you, Jeff. We got you for at least 30. (laughs) <laughs> so you, so you three got to get the, get, you have to pick up the slack there. I could eat twenty five. I in one, if you give me like an hour to sit at a table, I could eat twenty five. So I get if I if I, I get I could do so I could do six doubles easy. So that's twelve. I'd love to try it. I'd I'd, I'd love to try it. Four of us. 
So we're at 67. We need Will to eat 31. I don't like this number. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it. I think it's an under. I, I would love to give uh, you talking cheese or just regular hamburgers. I think if you add cheese, it would lessen the number, but I, we can, I mean, we can actually get a real number made on this. I would love, I would, I would love a real number and I would love for the four of us to get together and do this. And maybe we could have some fun, like charity thing. Maybe we can yeah, donate like, like 10 bucks each for however many we wind up eating and, and do something good. So yeah, let, we'll do it at the Super Bowl. Around. Perfect, perfect. Well, I don't. Well, New Orleans. There's there are no White Castles within oh. <laughs> God only knows how many miles in New Orleans. Mm. We will. We, we'll, we, look, we will all have to get together in Vegas, and we'll go to the White Castle on Paradise, or we'll go to the 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 White Castle that's over by Casino Royale, and and we'll do it. So that this has to happen. I agree. Moving on to the AFC North. Mike Tomlin and the Steelers obviously have never had a losing season. That joke's really running old by now. Though. So I'm, I mean, that might be the last time I said it. The Ravens obviously best record last year. Came up short again in the playoffs. They still are favored to win this division a plus 145. Uh, Jeff, should yeah. they be? I, I, I get why they are after last season, guys. But the question mark for them, for me, is their offensive line has gone through a big transition period in Baltimore. You know, Ronnie Stanley at, at left tackle can't stay healthy, right? Now, he, he's able to play, but doesn't practice very much. And he's got some, I think it's one bad knee. Like, lucky to sort of see him make it through the entire season. They don't really have a great answer backup. Andrew Voorhees from USC was out last year after getting hurt at the combine, I believe it was. Linderbaum is really good at center. They have their six nine, um, you know, Minnesota tackle playing playing guard, and then they have Roger Rosengarten out of uh, Washington, who I don't think fits that offense. Like I'm concerned, guys, especially in this division with the pass rusher and defense line they're going to play. That Lamar just gets hit too much, and that obviously will lessen his ability throughout the season to be as healthy and as and and, and, and as crisp. So I, I crisp, I, I have worries that they're not going to be as good as last season. Yeah, I I played under 11. I took a, a flyer on uh, to miss the playoffs as well. So, so I agree. Like, uh, if, if they have 12, 12 to beat me, if, if I can, if I get a wash out of uh, under 11 and they, they want to make in the playoffs, that, that's fine. But, but I, I agree. Losing losing the guys that they did on that offensive line. And again, just like we talked about Tua, like Lamar in the past has, has kind of been injury prone and because he's such a freak athlete. Didn't happen last year. I mean, can, can yeah. that, it, you, you're always betting on health with, 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 with all these guys. Well, yeah, I mean, I generally don't like to fade good coach, good quarterback combos. That's usually not a good way to make money. But like you said, they they lost a bunch on the offensive line. Uh, they don't have the uh, the safety blanket Patrick here, the Queen backup too. quarterback. They lose Patrick Queen. They lose McDonald, who's a very highly regarded defensive coordinator. And you never know how much of this. Yeah, you know, we, we don't really know. At least me, I'm not sophisticated enough to know, hey, this defensive coordinator is going to be huge. Sometimes it's, you know, these guys develop relationships with people in the media and they get puffed up. But it sounds like everybody really likes uh, McDonald, who's now the head coach at Seattle. You combine that with Cincy, who's got Got the talent, and you give them a schedule where they get the Panthers, the Titans, the Patriots, the Raiders, the Commanders, the Giants. If Burrow's healthy, you figure the defense will play better. I, I think Cincy is probably a better bet to win the division. I don't know that there's a ton of value at plus 145, really? but right now to win the division, I'd probably pick Cincy. I don't know. I, I know they have that last place schedule, but you still got the division games there against the, the 16th yeah. team, and you still got Kansas City, you still got the Eagles, and you still got Dallas. Like, I don't hate I don't hate the unders on an inflated number, and I don't hate the under uh, the, the, the miss the playoffs on the Bengals either. Uh, Sammy, I've got Ravens miss. I did do that. I got plus two forty. It's come down yeah. a little bit. There's still a plus two and a quarter out there. Fourth toughest schedule this year for the Ravens, and this is how the Ravens start first five games at Kansas City. Then you play the, the Raiders at Dallas, against Buffalo, at Cincinnati. You could be two and three, one and four easily, yeah. at which point they go from, you know, minus 300 to make the playoffs to minus yes. 180 to, you know, it just flips. And then yep. you could basically, you could free okay. roll Baltimore at plus prices on both sides. So that's a team unlike Miami, where you kind of want to let Miami get hot early and then kill them yeah. in the middle. This would be a team. If you're a Baltimore backer, 
Let them lose a couple of games, and then you could bet them at a nicer price to make the playoffs. And if they get off to a hot start, you know what? You miss the boat, and you miss the boat. You don't have to make a bet on every team, but I think that's a really good approach. What do you mean you don't have to make a bet? I'm kidding. You definitely don't. You have, have to, to bet on every game. You do have to bet on every. You do have to bet on Monday Night Football, the standalone games. You absolutely have to bet on those, but you don't have to bet on every team. Preferably yeah. parlayed together. Yes. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> But the, the surefire way to make money, money line parlay all the favorites, right? I, I guys, I took Browns to win the division at plus six hundred. It's come I don't down a little that bit. It, it, it's come down a little bit. Um, they're really good. Like yeah. their roster is legitimately yeah. one of the best in the NFL. The question is whether Deshaun Watson can just be average. Like if he is just average, just average. I'm not, we're not asking for the best in the NFL. Certainly can't be much worse than he's played. He's only played 12 games, I believe, in two years. Like He's been suspended. He was hurt. Just get average play. Look, I don't know what Chubb will be coming back off his injury, but their offensive line, they got some guys on Pup. They'll be fine. They're, they're good. Got Amari Cooper. Got Jerry Judy. They, they can rush the passer with Garrett Joku. and the guys they have there. They can play in the same. Like they're, they're a very good football team with just average quarterback play. They're very live to win the division. And oh, by the way, I, if Watson isn't what he is or isn't healthy, like I know we have our Jameis memes and like to poke fun at Jameis, like that's not the worst option to have to play if you no. need to go to a backup quarterback for an extended period of time. No, no it's, it's not. not. It's not. My only concern is I think their defense did get a little puffed up. If you look back, they played a lot of quarterbacks that were banged up. They played some bad quarterbacks. They they benefited from being at home, bad weather. Uh, that I know it's one game and Flacco threw picks. That Houston game, Houston carved them. That's a rookie quarterback where that defense went on the road and just did not step up again. Yeah. It's only one game. I just I worry if their defense is a little inflated by the quarterbacks they played in, in their home field. It's funny you guys talk. You know, Will, you're talking about like betting on every game and betting on everything. You guys haven't lived. Until you've uh, laid twelve hundred on Lee Win Win on a Sunday morning at five a.m. to to win the gold medal in the uh, the women's seventy one kilogram weightlifting competition in the Paris Olympics. I mean, Sounds me like you've that. lived. Oh, I lived it. Did, did you I'll win? Tell you what, it, 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 it was. It would picture me going against like powerlifting against like Will's daughters, like in their grade school classes. That's what this competition was. She was so like, I didn't know. I'd never seen her, but I just look at the price and then I look at my, like, Oh my God. And then you actually watch it. And it would, it was like me going against like a bunch of like grade school, like girls. That's how much she towered over the, over the competition. So it wound up being a, uh, a no sweat that remember that for 2028 in LA weightlifting, boxing, very, very formful in the Olympics. I'm picturing the, the chick from dodgeball. Kind of. Uh, a little, I, mean, I, 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 I have a picture. I'm, I'll, I'll text it to you after. I think she was uh, a little bit, a little bit thicker from what I remember. What I call seeing on the internet. I mean, Bear had to make up for that water polo wager he sent over to me. U.S. wasn't even the final. Bear, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah Dins, it's funny. Dinsick let me down with that one, but that was like literally. He gave us, he gave us the four bets. He gave us the water polo. He gave us um, U.S. gold over 39 and a half, which, oh, by the way, came down to the, the gold medal basketball game. And only because of a cyclist won earlier in the day. He gave us France under 24 and a half, which was an easy winner. And he gave us Lisa Carrington, the goddess in, in the, the 500 meter kayak, who set a, uh, a record. So we're going to we're going to cut Drew a little bit of a slack for a. Uh, for for one water water polo loss, so uh, I, I, I'll say this though about the Olympics too. I, I want to come back as like a Philippine gold medalist. Did you see what what this the, the got uh, the gold medalist from the Philippines got for winning the gold? He gets like cash, a home, like colon col seriously colonoscopies free from age fifty on, and probably getting and he back gets White food. Castle. I was gonna say coming all back to food. Does not get White Castle, oh. but he gets a lifetime supply of ramen. But like, like you talk oh, about, like sign me up, striking gold. That's but a fourteen like, parlay you want to hit right there. Absolutely, exactly. That's like plus twenty thousand right there. <laughs> but so like the, the Olympics, were you guys dialed in? They say like kidding aside, like were you guys like dialed into the Olympics? Because I love betting on yes. this stuff. It was fantastic. 
I thought it was great to see LeBron, Durant, Curry, these guys in the twilight of their career, all that greatness, three of the top yeah. 10, 15 best players of all time fighting back against Serbia. And it's kind of a shame none of those guys are really relevant. Like Durant's team got swept in the first round. LeBron lost in the first round. Curry lost. And Curry didn't even make the playoffs. And, uh, you know, just watch that Curry shooting display. Just one last reminder of, hey, these guys are great. Maybe they're kind of, kind of sad to say, but maybe their swan song is they they pass the torch, so to speak. No pun intended to the next generation of NBA players. It's cool to see all that talent on the court at the same time, overcoming a deficit, hanging out against France. That was pretty cool to watch. Yeah, it was a nice story, but I had Serbia nine to one in the oh, semis. <laughs> not as nice a story. <laughs> I I just like. Well, I, I like the the mental fortitude of waiting four years to compete in an event and getting like one opportunity to do so. I mean, obviously, in our business, if we have a bad podcast, which would never happen, you could just no. do it again, right? Like they're waiting four years uh, to to compete, and you win the the hundred by point zero zero five seconds, or, or you win an event by touching the wall right before another swimmer does. I, I just find that part of it, the mental part of preparation for the Olympics, so fascinating to me. The, the, the stories were great. I mean, there was a cyclist that won for the United States who started cycling, what, seven years ago? Like, she just got got into it, right? You know, like, there's these great personal stories that were fun to, to follow along, and then obviously ended with with, uh, with uh, that, the greatest heat check in, in, in Olympic basketball history with that, that shot by Steph Curry. But in between, I just like hearing – the stories about these athletes just for four years waiting, I guess it's three years in, in this instance, but the four years of training and sort of getting to these moments. And I, I, I enjoyed it as well. And they certainly, and ending the weekend with those two basketball games was, was a, a, a great way to, uh, to end the competition. Competition, quarterbacks, passing offenses, where, where the NFL is these days. Last year, Tua Tagovailoa led the NFL passing yards over 4,600. Um, remains to be seen if he will get to that number again this year. More on that later in the sh in, in the show. Uh, but you can obviously you can bet on a lot of things in the NFL, and one of the things you can bet on is who will lead the NFL in passing yards this year. I took a, a I mean, you see the, the the favorites, Mahomes and Stroud and Burrow and out. Like I went a little further down than that. I went Trevor Lawrence at 25 to one. And I know the the jury's out on is is Lawrence going to be this generational type quarterback like a lot of people thought he was going to be coming out of Clemson. Like last year, he missed a game and played hurt and a couple of others and threw for, four, for over 4,000 yards. The wide receivers didn't help him out a lot. Yeah, Christian Kirk, Gabe Davis is in. I love the, the, the pick of Brian Thomas, like I mentioned earlier. Travis Etienne catches the ball a lot out of the backfield. It, it, from week 10 on, Outside of one game against Tennessee in Nashville, all their games are either in the state of Florida or in a dome. So you're not worrying about bad weather and gusts of wind, cold, rain, snow later in the year. Like the schedule for him sets up really well. And it's just a matter of whether he can stay healthy and these new wide receivers and him get on that, get on the right page. But I, I thought a 25 to one Trevor Lawrence was a, a, a decent bet here to, to, to lead this category. Maybe by the time people listen to this, the books will have caught up, but there were some stale numbers. Uh, when McCarthy, the McCarthy news about uh, the torn meniscus came out, some books 130 to 1, 100 to 1, 80 to 1. Again, probably not going to hit, but he's got Addison. He's got Jefferson. He plays indoors. O'Connell's a good offensive coach. He's on a team where the secondary isn't good, so you're probably going to need to score to keep up. Uh, you're getting a starting quarterback where I think that was priced in a way where they were kind of assuming, hey, McCarthy's going to cut into his snaps, and now you're probably getting a full season or pretty close to it or a chance at a full season with Darnold. Again, if you can just shop around, have enough books, be nimble, be thoughtful of, hey, this injury happened, that means this. That's at least one that's, I don't know, if, if you can find a, a long number, it's at least worth thinking about. What's the Addison status? Sounds like his trial is not until October, so TBD is probably going to play at least for the first part of the season, so we'll see. Sammy? I was actually looking at this tweet um, from a Vikings guy on Twitter that I follow. Uh, in the last, what, five weeks, they've had a rookie quarterback tear a meniscus, starting cornerback, <laughs> cornerback tearing an ACL, the other starting corner got hurt day two of practice, the receiver getting the DUI, and the rookie cornerback losing his life. I mean, holy cow, like that is a lot of things yeah. that are horrible. Obviously, the yeah. last one worse than anything sure. that I mentioned before, but that is 
an unbelievable offseason. And yet at Will's point, you know, the 150 to ones on Darnold, even right now, 50 to one, 40 to one, 33 to one, you know, those, those numbers are drying up like crazy. Let me raise the Lawrence 25 to one. And this is not going to make a lot of people happy, but Will Levis is 35, 40 to one. They're going to throw the ball a lot. Yep. They're going to be down a lot. And he's got DeAndre Hopkins, Calvin Ridley, and Tyler Boyd. I mean, you know, a lot of things have to go right, but in terms of game script, they're going to be down in a lot of games. He's got the whole offense under his under his wings right now and his bad tattoos. I I, I think I think over on, on a lot of his Levis bets are going to be solid this year. But you know, 35, 40 to one, I don't think that's the worst bet in the world. Sounds like the 2016 national championship game, Calvin Ridley and DeAndre Hopkins. <laughs> yes, exactly. I don't, I don't, I don't hate the. I don't know if I can quite get there with Levis, but I don't hate the Titans this year at all. Like, like you can get some, like over six and a half wins at, at, at a decent price out there. Like that's that that division is not great, and maybe the Texans are a little overrated. Like the Colts, I think, are maybe a, a little a little too trade. Like I. I don't hate the Titans at all. There, I, I think they they they, they could they they're going to wind up they're going to be one of those teams. I think that people are going to be looking to pick against because of a a new head coach and not being sold on Levis, and just like they did against the Dolphins last year late in the season. Uh, they, they're going to derail a lot of people's suicide and survival pool picks right away. I thought about them as like a division sleeper because hey, this time last year, if there's a division to make a run, and who would have thought the Texans? Maybe that's still a way to play it. Hey, you're talking about a real long shot there, but you look at the schedule. Uh, they, they better be they better be good on defense, which I think well, you know some people think they could be really good on defense. Lev is better pop because again, you get back to that conversation. If you're in the AFC and you don't have one of these mega quarterbacks, Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, I, I don't care what division you're, you're going to run into a bunch of them. Your quarterback better be good, and, and, and the beginning of the schedule is uh, is pretty challenging here. Jeff, do you have any thoughts I'm, on? I'm just trying to I'm trying to find like any long shots that I like because you know the, the favorites and ones we talked about already. I mean, Cousins at plus fourteen hundred if he's healthy with the weapons they have. He was fourth a couple years ago in in yards, I believe. Like, I mean, maybe he's a guy. It's funny, Zach Wilson's plus fifteen thousand. Is there a single soul who's wagering on Zach Wilson <laughs> to be the leading the leading yard uh, quarterback in the NFL? What about Spencer Rattler, two hundred to one. Yeah, w- Jameis is there. I mean, Michael Penix has worse odds than Zach Wilson. I mean, Penix looked good the other day. He's not going to start the you know start the season out. This. I think really... Jeff's looking at the UFL odds. That's for Zach Wilson. <laughs> uh, by the way, Ben Genucci, UFL legend. Yes. Uh, now going to Buffalo. Look out, Josh Allen. Yes. I don't think a rookie is going to ever win this. I was looking back to see if any rookies ever got close. So but but, but Jaden Daniels is sixty is fifty five to what he he's going to throw the ball a lot in Washington, right? I mean they're not going to be great, and he's got wide receivers there. We know he can throw the ball deep. I, that might be a fun one to follow throughout the season. I don't think he gets home though with uh, with most yards on the season. So the guys chasing the quarterbacks down on the on the other side uh, lead the lead the league in sacks. Uh, the the obvious names at the top again. Uh, I'm not going to bet on on, on T.J. Watt. I'm not going to bet on Miles Garrett. Uh, I'm not going to bet Hendrickson. Wouldn't it be perfect Jets to bring in Hassan Reddick and have him not play, and then have the guy who goes to Philly, Bryce Huff, <laughs> lead the league in sacks at 100 to one. Fangio defense. He had 10 last year. They, they're going to face some statues at, at quarterback. You're going to have Daniel Jones twice, bad offensive line, Kirk Cousins, uh, Joe Burrow, Matthew Stafford. Like, like there, there are some guys there who take a like Dak gets sacked. Like, like that offensive line is in a little bit disarray now. Like, that defense is going to be better. You know, Fangio like likes to, to pressure the quarterback. Why not? Why not a little a little lunch money on Bryce Huff at 100 to one to lead the league in sacks. Bryce, yeah, Bryce Hoff. Sorry. Bryce Young would be a that boy. You're you're not getting. I would be a couple of zeros place. more. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I I'm. This is one where I'm looking shorter at shorter number. I like Parsons. I just like Mike Zimmer. I think he's going to unleash Parsons. Uh, you know, he's a, a different coach than Quinn. He's more intense. I thought he not not a raw deal at Minnesota, but if you remember, he wasn't like a terrible head coach. Uh, 
got them to the playoffs. He got derailed by injuries a lot. Blair Walsh misses a kick. He was really good covering spreads. I just think he's an aggressive defensive mind. I think we're going to see a lot of uh, you know a- attacking style out of out of Parsons and out of Zimmer in Dallas. I was laughing at the hold percentage. They got Watt at one book, four fifty. Parsons five to one. Garrett five to one. Crosby six. There you to go. One. Yep, that's how you do it. You, you give you give four guys at six to one or shorter. Holy cow! Well, let's take well. Let's take three percent more. Well, and then Allen is nine to one, and Bosa is nine to one. So they have six guys nine to one or less, which is not mathematically advantageous for the. Uh, <laughs> For the gambler, I'd probably bet the Neil Hunter at 50, 15 to one. I like that one, yeah. Uh, sorry, the the math on this prop just I can't even speak. That's how bad it is. And then another one is is Montez Sweat thirty to one. I mean they they have done a lot of really good things in Chicago on that side of the ball, and ideally they're ahead more in games. Now look, Caleb Williams is going to have to make plays in the fourth quarter, and I don't know that he can do that yet. Obviously, he's okay early in games. We saw him struggle down the stretch at USC late in games. I think the Bears are going to be fine and maybe even have some leads a lot this season. Um, but if they are ahead, they're going to unleash Montez Sweat 30 to 1, 40 to 1 on Sweat. Not a bad idea. And I did see that there's this rumor that if Judon wants to leave the Patriots, the Bears have the money. The Bears have so much money. It's crazy. Yep. Can you imagine Montez Sweat and Matthew Judon playing together? Holy cow. That would. That would change the entire division for sure. I mean, the Lions would still be favored, but the Bears would be super live if they had both of those guys coming at the quarterback. The the one market that I like in futures every year is this is the sack totals. I, I feel like they still sell these guys short every year. So for example, Miles Garrett's at 13, I see 13.75. So he needs 14 sacks, which he's gotten uh the last three years. And last year, mind you, he played hurt for like eight games, right? Uh, uh, Watt is at 13, same number, 13.75. He's been well over that number for most of his career if he's healthy all season. So, you, you know, you're, you're hoping that guys don't get hurt, obviously. Like, these numbers tend to be fairly low for the end result in a lot of these guys' seasons. They, they've actually done a better job this year than the previous years. I think, like, Parsons last year was like 11 and a half was his number that I wagered last year. Like, look at the sack totals for a lot of these guys. Even Crosby's over four, should get 14 sacks, like, 14 sacks is sort of like the floor for a lot of these good pass rushers. Sammy, Cubs making the playoffs? Cubs? <laughs> yeah. Bears? Yeah, the, the, the baseball team from the south side of Chicago? No, I'm kidding. I don't I'm gonna, know. I'm, gonna, I'm so angry at you right now. Uh, the Bears making the playoffs. I'll say this. I had a lot no, of – No, I know. Seriously, I know. Cubs. Cubs making the playoffs. Well, you said south side. Seriously. They're from I'm throwing the in the baseball side. question. Uh, I hope okay. not. I, I can't stand them. Are we talking Cubs or Bears? I'm so confused. Cubs. We're well, talking Cubs now. I know a lot of people, uh, there were some people I saw on Twitter, like trying to bet over on the Bears, but to miss the playoffs, thread that needle. Nine is a tough way to thread. I think you got to <laughs> pick a direction. And, well, you know, just decide the, which the, yeah, so, how, how so are the I, NFC? Are you going, go, going like over eight and a half, but you're not going to make the playoffs? Like, like you can make the playoffs maybe at eight and nine in the NFC. Somebody said that it's a good bet. I I love the Bears over eight and a half wins, not mentioning the minus 150 juice. I love that. <laughs> Other than that. But, but I don't think they make the playoffs. And I'm going, oh, my God. Like, if you if you win nine games, you're probably in the playoffs. And the, and the funniest part about absolutely. that, in the NFC, the NFC sucks. There's, like, three really good teams, San Francisco, yeah. Philly, and Detroit. That's it. Um, Green Bay could be – charging but not there yet and then you got dallas but there's you got two more slots that are wide open um the bears to make the playoffs are even money why wouldn't you just bet them to make the playoffs then then go over eight and a half at minus 150 because are, that takes an extra step of like are what, the bears a playoff team sammy are the bears I, a playoff I'm, team? I'm gonna say i'm gonna say no but i but in terms of like if you gave me you know a hundred dollars to play with I would much rather put that hundred on the Bears to make the playoffs than you lay a hundred and fifty to win. You know. Yes. Like it, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that. Like I would much rather you take the plus price because it's it's basically the same bet. If they if they win eight games, they're not making the playoffs. If they win nine games, they probably make the playoffs. Yes. But it's it's going to come down to him in the fourth quarter, and I'm inclined to think that they are not going to win nine or ten games. But seriously, I want to know, are the Cubs going to make the playoffs? No. Are the White Sox going to lose 125 games? 
I got him losing 140. So yeah, no, I'm kidding. Not 140, 120. <laughs> You talk about whole percentage being mathematically impossible. 42 impossible. and 120 is what I got them. I just watched the Yankees go two for 18 against the White Sox. They're, I'm not happy about what's happening right now. Come on, Yankees. Come on, Will. Pick it up a little bit. Your favorite team. Yeah, we, we need the Yankees under Welcome 90. Our world. We need Yankees under 93 and a half wins. I mean, we, we, we're, we're rooting for the White Sox right now. Is Paul Skeen's got a lock to win the uh, the National League Rookie of the Year. Will, I wouldn't say a lock anymore. I think they played poorly enough. Where hey, if you shut them down, Merrill's played well enough. Where I, I mean, I thought it was crazy a week ago. I don't think it's as crazy now. Prices are gone though. Prices are gone. Great. Yeah. I like yeah, I like keeping you on your toes here. Everyone, people care about baseball. People want to know yes. maybe firing a little baseball bet here. I actually fired one on the Padres to have the number one seed in the NL in the NL twenty five to one before. To be fair, I did I did derail the NFL conversation to ask you about White Castle, so I should have been ready. <laughs> you, can the, you, can, you can derail any conversation at any time. I should have been more Cubs. prepared for the Cubs question. Do you yeah. keep Do you keep a a, a a a box of White Castle next to you just to remind no. you? Do you no, have it, it earlier there's, today? There's, no, this this actually. I had th- this was on my my uh, my coffee bar before uh, downstairs, and I just had Matt Humans had sent me this a- a- as a joke and as a reward for winning the the Circa Friday Football Invitational a couple of years ago. So I had it down there, and I and I and I brought it, I I brought it back up, and it literally just coincidentally was sitting right at my desk. But no, I don't have a White Castle in Connecticut. I either have to go to. I either have to go to Jersey or or, or, or Vegas or uh, Indianapolis or Cincinnati, like Big Ten countries, got some uh, some White Castles, and, and I, I, this White Castle challenge has to happen now. I, you got me fired <laughs> up about this. I just, I just realized what saying does. he had ninety. He's saying he's fit, our producer saying he polished up ninety five during the he and the crew. I, I'd, I'd like to see that. I want, I want that documented. Sammy, you got me wound up now. Well, I now we all know what you do between shows. You just huff that little right. box to get the onion smell in your nose and then oh, it just gets you going the, for the show. The way the onion, see the, the onions like with the grease just melt right into the bun. Mm. Oh, it's so in the, like the bread gets like soft and like, oh, it's so good. I would think Jeff would be more excited, but he's not. And Jeff acting like he's like this Michelin star, like restaurant connoisseur there. Uh-uh. I, I, Will, I don't know, Will, do, do your kids have iPads and, like, iPhones and they text you stuff? It's no, very, but, no, well, Will's kids don't have any of that. Tablet, they just, text me. Oldest one just got a tablet. Oldest one just got a tablet. Uh, so one my, of those texts where they can text. He just texted me kind of a popsicle. I was like, I, I, what, who cares? <laughs> do what you guys want to do. <laughs> Mark knows to go to dad's. <sighs> exactly. If you go to mom, the answer is no. Yeah. Well, on that All note. Right. Is, is this the end of the Gambler Group Chat segment? The answer is yes. Guys, that was fun. We'll do it again next week. All right, Bear. Last year, we had the uh, the uh, the fortunate um, circumstance of food being delivered to our studio. Yes. We will, we will, back, we will be back there uh, very shortly. And we, and we got to wear nice, you know, like, meat suit, right? Like, we got a nice... It feels yep. like after today's discussion, White Castle should be sending... Our studio. I'll give you guys the address if you want. A, a oh. nice set of warm cheeseburgers. Oh. I've never had White Castle before. We, you know, our, our recordings go kind of long if we do both in a day. Like I feel like I'm a little parched after a long oh. recording. If there was just a, a, a tray of White Castles before we went our collective ways afterwards, you off to, to Big New Kickoff, me back home, I would greatly appreciate that. Well, I, I would have greatly appreciated too. I don't know if the passengers on my flight to to wherever I was heading for bidding kickoff would probably appreciate a, a, a half dozen. You eat them in the car. Don't don't fool anybody. Car. I'm, I'm, they might not even make it out the door. <laughs> the, so quickly the entire, throw those the, the, well, well, I have to give like one to each person as we walk down the stairs. It's like, thank you for your service. Thank you for your help today. Just like you pass them out as we go. All right, Bear. Uh, best bets time. Let's hear what you got for the NFL season. Yeah, I hinted at it in the uh, in the group chat. I played all the two unders this year. Uh, I like the under 4,105 passing yards. Uh, the most you can also get under 25 and a half touchdowns, I believe it is. Um, I just think everything worked out perfectly for him in that offense last year. Uh, I think they got some 
some things that maybe need to work on this year, lose some guys on offense, a bunch of guys on defense are out too. Uh, I think playing some late cold weather games could affect uh, those production numbers later in the year. Uh, I hope he stays healthy. Last year was uh, kind of an anomaly. Uh, he got his contract. So uh, hopefully he will uh, continue to perform for a long time and stay healthy at that level. But yeah. uh, I just think his, uh, he was so much of a surprise last year that he did what he did. I, I think there's going to be a bit, a bit of a regression this year. So I'm under 41, 4,100 and a half. Look, I, I think that you're taking this and look, we don't root for any injuries, of course, but that's part of the game. Right. And it's why I like running back unders, I, I quarterback unders to me, like taking overs is so difficult. Yep. You have to find like the really, it's funny, like Daniel Jones number, by the way, is so low bear. It's like, it's like embarrassingly low. Like that's a guy you go. Yeah. If he completes 185 yards a game, he's going over. But otherwise, like it's hard to look at these guys in a league where we saw 66 quarterbacks play last season bear. Right. And like, and, and go over and he's pros because you missed two games that's it. Like that. That's it. one game. Like you're done. And so, uh, and we talked about earlier, like the weather situation at Cleveland at night, at Green Bay at night, situations where it hasn't always been great. I had the game in, in the snow in Buffalo was good, but historically not been great in cold weather. So, um, I'm with you there. All right, I have Browns to make the playoffs. Bear uh, at plus one forty five ish. I think the Browns are good. I, I feel like we're not being honest about them because. People don't like Deshaun Watson. Totally fair, by the way. Um, and and that he hasn't played great in Cleveland. But Stefanski has gotten the most of every quarterback who's played there. Joe Flacco, Dorian Thompson Robinson, like whoever he has in there, he, he's gotten the most out of them. It's a very talented roster. And the AFC is very loaded. I get that. But look at the division. Baltimore's offensive line, question marks there. We're both, I think, on Steelers, maybe not very good this year. I think the Bengals are going to be good, but you know, Burrow's health is always a question. The Browns are just a good team, good offensive line, good defensive line, good weapons. Hopefully Chubb is back 100% this season. But all they need is, is average from Watson to make the playoffs. They don't need him to be the best in the NFL, but just be anywhere between 10 and, and 13, Bear. A little bit above average, and they're a playoff team. It, it, it sounds a whole lot like the uh, the team that I root for. This need Aaron Rodgers to just kind of be – be average and, and and they should be okay. No, the Browns. Are, I think we were. Above, no, I, 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 I think we were above average today for our podcast. I enjoyed that one. Uh, that anytime good. we can get food and uh, Olympic conversations in, in our pod, like I'm, I was happy with today. How about you? I have a letdown when it when these events that we get to watch sports in the middle of the day end, like the Euros, Copa, and now the Olympics. Like, what am no. I supposed to do? Hang out with my kids and my family? No. No sports to watch. Turn on the TV. Turn turn on the TV. There's some some tennis going on now in uh no, I, Cincinnati. There, US Open, US Open tennis coming up in a couple of weeks. That'll be fun. I'm looking forward to wagering on what sounds like fake names when when you text me uh, who to wager on. But um, tennis is the one sport, man. I cannot. I don't watch any tennis. Like not even like the final when the two best in the world are playing. I just can't do it. I don't know why. Uh, it's, it's great. Wait, we're gonna have to. We have to. We. We really, I don't think we succeeded on fully making you a soccer convert, but we're going to have to try for a... Uh, oh, buddy. The, a, a the, the, the Women's Euro 2025. I don't know if that's real or not. You text me that, I'm in. I'm starting to study oh, we're, abs we're absolutely... No, I'm... I'm we, but whether... Whether whether it's Carly, whether it's Heather O'Reilly, uh, Ari Hanks, whomever. Melissa Ortiz. Like, we're going to have some, some people on to talk uh, Women's Euro next year because... Uh, after being in Sydney uh, last year for the Women's World Cup, I, I'm I'm I am ready for uh, I'm ready for Switzerland. For, uh, for Women's World Let's do sure. it. I'm in. Be a lot, lot, a lot to talk about. Kicked around a lot today. I was happy with that. Appreciate everybody for uh, downloading, rating, reviewing, subscribing, watching us on the the YouTube channel or Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. Remember. Lost your bet. The more you lose when you win.